Sanibel Island, located off the coast of southwest Florida in the Gulf of Mexico, is renowned for its abundance and variety of seashells. The unique geography of Sanibel and its position as a barrier island makes it an ideal spot for collecting shells. I happen to live very close to Sanibel Island, so I spend a considerable amount of my free time on the beach looking for these seashells and sea creatures. I wanted to see what else I could learn, so I signed up for a beach walk with the Sanibel Shell Museum. I got to the beach early so I could catch the sunrise, which I'll share with you in a little bit, and then I immediately went to go see what was left on the beach. So today we're going to go beachcomb Sanibel. I'll identify all 22 different species of beach stuff we're going to find today, including this shell that we shellers call a freak shell. So if you're ready to see what all is out there for us today, let's go to the beach. So I do live on the west coast of Florida, and by all rights, I really shouldn't be able to enjoy sunrises, but we still can. A lot of times if you're on the beach, you just, this land is so far away, you just can't see it. We'll check back in on that sunrise. It's gonna get even better. And here we have a moon snail. This is called a shark eye. This is a true shark eye with a little bit of beach stuff on it. That beach stuff will not bother me one bit. It's hard to find shark eyes that size. It really is. Here's a common nutmeg. A lovely little nutmeg. Do you know that they're distantly related to augers? I know, crazy, right? Go figure. And this is an urchin. We call them sand dollars. And this fella here is a keyhole urchin. I'm going to try to wash it off, but oh wait, we have an apple murex here. Oh, it's a pretty good size one too. All right, we'll wash that one off as well. Yeah, that's decent. Oh yeah, empty, excellent. All right, uh-oh, I wanted to wash them off, but wait a minute, what else do we have here? All right, we have another one. All right, that's a reject, but I did that really quick. I wanted to show you. It will hold, it's kind of chipped. So that is why I didn't, I can evaluate it really, really quickly. So apologies. What about this one? Hmm. Yeah, we'll probably leave that one there. Anything else need to get washed off? Yeah, that one. All right, so we got a sand dollar and two little bit sandy apple muric shells. Not a bad way to start off the morning, if you ask me. Now this is an apple murex, but you'll notice it is not empty. I, I know it's all sandy. There's no hole in the shell. So that means that the critter is still alive and well. So that is a living snail and that needs to stay at the beach. Oh, and I noticed that the sand was pink. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, so we're gonna put this live critter back in the water. And then I want to check on that sunrise. All right, there you go, fella. Oh, oh, it's so pretty. I came here purposely early so that I could catch the sunrise. Sometimes they are just spectacular. Let me zoom out. There we go. We can see the whole thing at one time. Oh, it's so pretty. And it goes so quickly. Yeah, just really beautiful. So on Sanibel, seeing the sun come up is kind of nice. And just one more air. What a beautiful sunrise. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm just so happy to be here. It's so beautiful. I'm looking for seashells. Oh, look, everywhere I look, I see joy. Now, oh, hopefully there's something, something good. All right, we got ourselves a banded tulip. Also, the scientific name is the Centura hunteria. Okay, what else? I love being in the water if I can. It feels like a video game to me. Lightning whelk, nah, a little chip. Still, nice find. All right, what do I got? 
All right, so that is a juvenile fighting conch. A little bit rounded. It's got that pink tinge. Sometimes shells will have that, and then that's the banded, another banded tulip. I don't know what that is. It's just like a pink tinge. Like it kind of just has a pinkish hue to it. I don't know. A nutmeg with a little tiny, yeah, probably was a drill hole. So something tried to slurp out the contents of the nutmeg. And that's an apple murex, but lots of beach stuff on it. And I, if you find that, I encourage you to try to clean that up. It'll clean up fine. I'm probably not going to keep it. I probably will find enough clean ones. That is a turkey wing, also known as a zigzag arc. Ooh, and another shark eye. Oh, it's so pretty. So that is another moon snail. Okay, so there's a depression in the back there. So that means that this is a false shark eye. We talked about that last week, that depression there. So it's a moon snail, it's a shark eye, but it is a false shark eye. We'll take a look at a, new, a real shark eye in a little bit. And then that's the sunrise. That is just not quite as impressive as those beautiful, like bright, fiery red clouds and everything. But that's what I got. You know, the sand's not really pink anymore. But guess what? Now I can see the seashells a lot better. Awesome. Oh, so that is our state shell. That is a horse conch. And it's empty. That's why I'm looking really, really well. I only collect empty shells. I encourage everybody to just collect empty shells. Make sure there's no critters inside there. Another beautiful banded tulip. A lovely, lovely shell. Oh, I got grabby. It must have, mm, must have say, must have been something good. So that is an alphabet cone. It is very desirable. One of the better, quote unquote, better shells you would find. Mm, the aperture looks good. Yeah, that's a great looking shell. That's an awesome alphabet cone. And here we have, oh, that's nice too. That's a nice looking lightning whelk. Great color, nice size. And yeah, that's beautiful. I'll let, they start to lose their color when they get a little bit bigger. That is the quahog. Look at the pattern on that. Oh, it's so neat. So this is a relatively common shell with a very unusual pattern. And that just makes it really kind of okay, kind of special. You. And in the background there, we got dolphins. So dolphins are also out there enjoying their morning. I don't always catch them because I have my head down, but if I'm lucky, I'll pick my head up, look around, and spot some critters. This is a coquina. I love the color of the coquinas. I wish they got huge. And look at this, it's a little kitten paw sitting inside of a calico scallop. Both collectible, lovely collectible shells. Just fun that they were both kind of sitting on the beach like that. A painted egg cockle. Oh, they're kind of neat. They don't get that big. They only get about an inch big. Beautiful example of a painted egg cockle though. That is awesome. And here we have some ruddy turnstones. So we do have a bunch of different birds that you'll run into at the beach. These critters actually go up into the Arctic. I think, do they breed in the Arctic or do they breed down here? But yeah, they'll go up to the Arctic and then hang out in Florida. They get to see a lot of cool stuff, I bet. So these are, there's a calico scallop on the left. Ah, maybe a rough scallop on the right. Kind of looks like a little baby heart. So scallops are one of the fun things. I do encourage you to go to Sanibel if you really like scallops. I happen to think that Sanibel has some pretty good ones. This is another apple murex. It was apple murex day at Sanibel. Right, not really, I'm just saying that. We're going to find a lot of them. And they're all different. So I'm gonna pick, so I kind of see, all right, that one's got a shell jammed in there. That's a little different. And this one is a little beach worn. I mean, ever so slightly. It's not quite as angular as it could be. Oh, another moon snail. So this is another shark eye. And it does not have that depression on the underside that we talked about with that earlier shell. So this is a true shark guy just in case you are interested i kind of like little weird tid 
bit knowledge like that. That is an alternate talon. Isn't that cool? And so something drilled a hole in it. Another snail. It didn't just knock and say, knock, knock, who's home? They, they drill into each other's snails and they kind of slurp the contents out. Not these guys. So this is a Florida fighting conch and that is a true conch. They are only algae eaters. And I think this shell is gorgeous, but I'm actually mentally talking myself out of it. It's got a little gouge in it. I mean, I love the color, but it's got a couple little chips and divots. So I'm going to leave it. It's beautiful. I'm sure I will find one that is just absolutely perfect. Now that is a true tulip, a lot more rare than the banded tulips. And they get a lot bigger and they have a lot different colors. That is a juvenile fighting conch. Oh, and that was interesting. That little area right there looks like somebody tried to drill into that was not successful. That is a Florida prickly cockle. It's kind of light, like the light. Usually they're a more dark, robust color. So these are just kind of the things that are kind of like rambling through my head. I kind of know what the shell is. What's it going to look like? Are you going to be perfect? <gasps> you just might be. So that is also a fighting conch. It's got its stromboid notches, so we know that that is a true conch. Oh, it's, yeah, yep, ah, it's a keeper. So pretty. Oh, hello, second alphabet cone. Hmm, well, all right, the opening or the aperture is a little broken, but overall, it's a really great specimen. Nice size, great color. Yeah, so I'm going to hold on to that lovely alphabet cone. Yay. And that is a fighting conch. Now, fighting conchs are relatively common, but the colors and the variations. Now, look at this one's a little pink. I kind of mentioned that pink color. So I don't know if I'm going to keep that one or not. Oh, it's really kind of pretty, though. The knobs are a little different. This one I'm definitely, definitely keeping. So this is a fighting conch, and we shellers, we call this a freak shell because something happened to this animal that made the shell grow really, really strange. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time on the beach with this shell, but quickly, I do want to revisit this because it's actually really cool. So the top part, you can actually see the juvenile shell. So that all these shells, they start as little guys and they just kind of grow and build. The backside looks normal. That looks a little weird. Now let's compare that to another juvenile fighting conch. So you can really kind of see how the juvenile shell there got misshapen and then the rest of the shell kind of kept growing. Oh, I just think that that shell is neat. So just a, it's called a freak shell, a freak Florida fighting conch. That is neat. All right, another apple murex. Probably won't hold on to that or that. Yeah, there were a lot of apple murexes on this particular day and that happens. Banded tulip, well, nope. Your aperture is broken. I will leave you here. So that's more the reality. If you watch my videos regularly, you know I kind of chop them up and I'm only really showing you the stuff that I'm picking up and keeping, but reality of shelling doesn't work like that. You kind of walk a lot, you pick up a lot of broken stuff. So that first one was a fighting conch. That's a colorful moon snail broken unfortunately but that's kind of pretty so hold on to that and so yeah I guess we all shell differently right we all kind of look for different things we kind of find different attributes interesting so that's another moon snail I'll hold on to that for example Jesse who ran the Sanibel Shell Museum tour she loved slipper snails which I thought was really interesting so this would be my ideal place to go shelling, but I can't really see. So <laughs> the water's very, very shallow and you can see yeah, just as the tide is coming in and out. So I do love that. I'll continue to try to go in the water and shell there, but it can be really frustrating. If you know, if you can't see, you can't shell there, but I, I tend to kind of go in and keep trying. So that's a lovely lightning whelk. And that's where it gets its name from the juvenile shells with their little zigzag pattern. Oh, another, oh, that's broken. That was a uh, banded tulip. That is a lightning whelk. And we have found better examples, so I just, I won't hold on to those. Oh, but look at here. Now, this is very common. This is a cross-barred Venus clam. Like, so common, I almost never talk about them. I apologize. It's like the sand. I don't talk about the sand. It's there. 
but that is a crossbarred Venus clam. I liked the pattern on top. Kind of had a little bit of purple and the yellow on the interior. Neato. Okay, so this dolphin was a little bit closer to shore and it's feeding and they chase their fish into the shore. So that's the opportunity where you really kind of get close to them when they do this little action when they're chasing. I've gotten pretty close. I don't go in the water. When I see them kind of doing their thing, I kind of stay away. I don't want to get knocked over by an 800 pound dolphin. Thank you very much. A calico scallop. Hmm, I actually, oh, I think the white one might be a bay scallop. I'm trying to really tease apart the difference between the bay and the calico. All right, that is another apple murex. Let's look at that. that one's pretty good. Hold on to that one. So a couple of scallops. And shocking, I know, <laughs> another apple murex kind of fun and most of these have been on the darker color uh, they also apple murex will be like an orangey a little bit lighter so that is a critter that is a lightning whelk so lightning whelk perfectly fine empty awesome shell to collect yay this is a critter so there's a critter in there that is a spiny jewel box yep if it gives any resistance I know that the animal is alive it's got a couple of empty barnacles hanging around and you can see yeah that's it they filter feed and you can kind of see there's a little hole there so that's where the water will filter in and out of its shell so I'm going to place my friend gently in the water oh that's pretty so another calico scallop and sometimes they're just so like tangerine with that red color just one seashell so pretty oh and another one so this is a rough scallop it's a little easier to identify we don't have all that many scallops but the ones we do are actually quite lovely speaking of lovely what a view i think i'll be quiet and let you enjoy some beach time All right, let's check out what's up here. I personally am terrible about checking the upper rack lines and I usually find some really great stuff. So I, I guess the water just pulls me down there. Okay, another calico scallop. Lovely. I do see some leucines. I see some Atlantic giant cockles. I see yellow, yellow prickly cockle. And the interior, yeah, that's pretty good. Oh. That one's broken. I don't know why. I always feel like the upper rack line is the first thing to kind of get picked through. And so the stuff at the water is going to be fresher, if that makes any sense. I don't know. That's how my brain works anyway. But there can sometimes be great stuff in that upper rack line. Another fighting conch shell. Ooh, with that nice lovely white stripe. Yep. Empty. Keeper of a fighting conch. Oh, another alphabet cone. So again, super collectible. We already have two and one of them was really quite good. So I'm not gonna keep that. I'm gonna let somebody else, there's plenty of people here. Hopefully somebody else can add that to their collection. I kind of start with the shells that are a little more beat up until I find a better shell and then I'll replace it. That is a fighting conch. I have a pretty couple of good ones today. So I'm just, mm, I'm going to keep that. The coloring's really kind of nice. Aperture, I don't know. So I'm not sure if I held on to that. It's still lovely though. A lovely calico scallop. Oh, just such a delicate, beautiful colors. And yeah, I've been spending some time in the water. I'm getting a little wrinkly. And for January, yay me. I think that is a rough scallop. So today, yeah, it's probably in the 60s, which is fine. You can be in the water. It's not too bad. Lovely scallop. Oh, another apple murex, whose scientific name is 
Philonton, I can't say it, Philonotus ponum. I was kind of hoping to learn the scientific name, but I'm going to have to figure out how to pronounce it first. So that is another apple murex. This is a colorful moon snail. So it is another member of the moon snail family. But we call this a colorful moon snail. It could be a lot more colorful. It's fine though. Kind of lovely having its little delicate patterns. A lovely, colorful moon snail. Okay, it's been a while since I've had to share the beach. I'm actually really happy to see so many people here. And oh, let me just give you the heads up. If you're coming to Sanibel, give yourself plenty of time to get over here. The traffic has been crazy. Now, you know, we picked up about a billion of those apple murex. So you know that that's an apple murex. That is a mossy arc. So they have all sorts of cousins in the arc family. That is a mossy arc. Mossy arc, another apple murex. Oh, pretty. So another lovely fighting conch with on the orangey side. Lovely. And an egg cockle. I've been finding these a little bit more on the regular, these egg cockles. So that's kind of exciting. Always nice to see something different. And I did notice, so I was leaving the beach and I was like, hey, this looked totally, totally different the last time I was here. So I was right. I went back in my footage and this area has been renourished with sand, which is very cool. So this is what it looked like the last time I came here on December 18th. So yeah, it's pretty beat up. It was after a storm. It's always good to go shelling after a storm, but it was pretty beat up. So that's what look, look at the buildings over there on the left. And then the buildings on the left are there. Look how different the beach is. Oh, it's so nice that it's coming back and we're getting ready to invite new visitors back to the island. And there's another area or another resort that has been busy getting ready to accept people back. And that is the Sundial Beach Resort and Spa. So they recently just completely updated a lot of their uh, landscaping and it looks beautiful. Now they are excited to announce that they're going to start taking reservations starting this August. So you can go to sundialresort.com. You can find out a little more information, but I am excited to let you know it's in a great location for shelling. So they will be able to host you starting August. So that's kind of exciting. We know that our islands are awesome just the way they are, but with a little bit of help in the landscaping and a little bit of help in construction, it will be even better. So I did manage to take a couple things off the beach today. Let's start with that lovely sand dollar. And then there was a couple of lightning walks. One of them was a pretty good size. It's a couple of moon snails, including a colorful moon snail, one spiny jewel box. We got some docenias up there on the right. Atlantic giant cockles. We have a crossbarred Venus clam. We have some banded tulips. Yellow prickly cockle, coquina, alternate talon, looks like a little rough scallop. The horse conch, the buttercup leucine. We have some calico scallops there on the bottom. Let's see the Florida fighting conchs. I did get a couple of those. We got two nutmegs, a fighting conch, the alphabet cones, the painted egg cockle. There was one murex, but orange, uh, yellow on the inside, which is kind of cool. Some rough scallops, that alternate talon, that freak shell. There were 22 different species of things that I managed to find. I honestly did expect to find a little bit more, but I never know what's gonna be out there. Patreons, thank you from the bottom of my heart thank you you really do inspire me and just make sure that i bring you my best but next week's gonna be so awesome yeah so anyway i hope you don't mind a little bit of a spoiler those of you who know shells probably know what that was so anyway it's gonna be very exciting for me i can't wait to share i hope you have a great week i will see you again next sunday